Are you interested in being a travel vlogger? Do you want to know the basics of daily travel vlogging? Do you want to see how little gear it actually takes to daily vlog? We're going to Italy for five weeks and we're going to travel vlog the entire trip using only this gear. I'm going to go through it piece by piece and show you what I'm taking and why I'm taking it. Let's get started. First, of course, is your cell phone. Now, this might be a no-brainer. You've got to bring your cell phone with you. But I put mine in an otter box, and I drilled a little hole to it and added a lanyard. So this way I can put it on my wrist, and no one can steal it away from me, and I can't drop it if I'm up on a balcony or roof. So that's the first thing. Next, you need to bring your chargers for your cell phone. This is very important. People always forget these things. Don't. The coolest thing that I bring is this little Joby, like gorilla pod sort of thing for the cell phone. If you watch Casey Neistat's vlogs, you know he uses a big one. This is a little version of it. What you do is you take this guy, you put it just like that and it holds your phone and then it becomes a tripod. As a bonus on a plane, you can use it to watch a movie. Next up, I bring a life-proof underwater case. In case I'm going to the beach, I swap my phone into this guy. I also bring these ReadyCam tripod phone mounts. It allows you to put your phone into here and then attach it to a quarter 20 inch tripod or any other gear that you might have. A good picture is made up of 90% good sound. So you want good sound. This little guy right here is a Rode VideoMic Me with a eighth inch TRRS connection that plugs right into the side of a cell phone. It has this dead cat on it to block wind noise and really gets great audio. And you can point it either to toward you or away from you, either way. In addition to that, I bring these Rode Lav microphones. I bring two of them. It connects to a TRRS connection into the side of the phone. It allows you to take your phone, put it in your pocket, wire it up just like this one is right here. And then I can put the camera at a distance. And what we do is we clap sync between both of us. And that allows in post for us to sync the audio from the phone to the audio of the camera. This provides really great clean audio at a distance. In addition to that, there is a little cable that allows you to plug this into it and convert it to a standard eighth inch connection that you can plug into any camcorder. On top of that, don't forget the iPhone 7 TRRS to lightning cable. You're going to need that if you have an iPhone 7. One of the most awesome camera gear finds is this guy right here. I'll link it below. You can find it on Amazon called the iReader. What this does is allows you to slide in an SD card or a micro SD, plug it into the bottom of your phone and transfer data from your phone to this. So you can back up all your videos, all your photos to SD cards. So even if you have a 16 gig iPhone, you can get 32 gig, 64 gig or 128 gig cards and back that stuff up. So this way you can keep all of your videos. If you're renting a car, you're definitely going to need one of these guys, a windshield mount to hold your phone. It allows you to easily read Google Maps. Plus with your phone up here, you can turn it on and get car vlogs. It's absolutely fantastic. This little one here, I also have set up to where I could put a GoPro on it if I wanted to. Next is my main camera. I use a basic camcorder. I don't use a DSLR camera. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is they're big, they're bulky, they're heavy, and we carry everything on our backpacks. We carry everything on, we don't pack any luggage. Two is they're complicated. I know how to use one, not everybody does, but you, knowing how to use all of the features of a DSLR is a curse because you will spend more time trying to compose a shot and less time enjoying your vacation. By having a simple camcorder that gets a really good image, you can zoom in the things, you can get what you get, and you spend more time enjoying your vacation, which is ultimately important. In addition to that, nobody really wants to steal this. It does not look very valuable. It could be a $100 item, it could be a $500 item. But this is very easy to just carry around. Plus, I can easily take this camera and put it on a carabiner and walk around with it like this. You can't do that with a DSLR. So it's at the ready, and I don't have to lug around a backpack with a bunch of camera gear in it. This camera is an older Canon HFS 200, which shoots HD video. Uh, it's about six or seven years old. You can probably find a better deal on a newer one that gets probably shoots 4K. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this camera now because there's better stuff out there, but it's what I have. It works great, and I've carried it with me for a long time, so I still do. In addition to that, extra batteries. I have 
four batteries for this camera and two chargers. This allows me to keep my batteries charged up and keep going. Batteries are very important when travel vlogging. Also, these batteries are pretty small and they easily go into one of these cargo pockets. Camera remote control. It's easy to take with you. You can put the camera at a distance and you can start recording and, you know, camera remote control. In addition to that, I picked up this quarter 20 cold shoe adapter from Amazon, which allows me to take the hot shoe from the camcorder, slide this into it, screw down onto it, and then I've got a quarter 20 thread on the top that I can attach a light to, or I can attach a GoPro to, or any other sort of accessory. On top of that, I've got these little quarter 20 screws that I can screw into the bottom of the camera. And then I can attach a GoPro down here, or I can attach a light down here, which makes it very versatile. Moving on to lights. These little things are called Litras, or Lytras, although it's spelt Litra, but the company calls it Litra. And they're pretty bright, and they're pretty awesome, and they're pretty compact. And they have a quarter 20 thread on the bottom of them, which would allow me to thread it onto the bottom of the camera like that, or use the cold shoe mount on the top and thread it on the top of the camera like that, and they're easy to carry. Uh, in addition to that, I can just throw these guys into my pocket, pull it out, walk around, and just hold it like this. Of course, charging cables for the little lights. GoPro mounts for the little lights. And a little belt clip for the lights. I don't think I'm gonna use this, but it's so small I'm bringing it anyway. Next up is the whole GoPro world here. First, obviously, is you gotta bring a GoPro. This is a Hero 5 and it's great. I used the label maker and I printed out my website, vinceroca.com, and I stuck it inside here. So this way, in case the camera gets lost and someone wants to kindly return it, they can find my website and get a hold of me. It's a good reason to register your own website. In addition to that, all of my batteries have my website name on them as well, so that would be inside the camera, and if a good Samaritan wanted to return it to me, that would be awesome. Another thing to do is record your address into a video on the camera. That should be your first video. Uh, the problem for me with that is, is I go through a lot of cards through a lot of different days that I have to remember to record my address every day, so using the domain name works out well. Obviously, batteries. I have three batteries for the Hero 5. Obviously, if you have batteries, you need a battery charger. This is a dual charger, plugs into USB, so I need a charging cable for that guy right there. I also have the charging cable to plug into the Hero 5, so I can charge three batteries at once. Uh, first cool item is a suction cup windshield or car mount for the GoPro, and it has a safety cable onto it that you can cable the GoPro and you attach it to one of the parts of the car. Uh, so this way you can get exterior driving shots. You can also stick this on the windshield and get interior vlogging shots in the car. A GoPro mouth mount. This allows you to put a GoPro on here, stick it into your mouth, and you get pretty good steady shots if say you're on an ATV or something or a surfboard, rough terrain, uh, because the natural gimbal access of your head tends to keep your head straight. It will keep the GoPro straight, so you'll get much better shots doing it that way. A, another trick is when you're using your GoPro for steadier shots, instead of just using your hand like this, put it on your chin like this or over your mouth and you'll get much better shots this way. This here is an assortment of GoPro mounts that allow me to get all sorts of directions with it. I can mount two GoPros or I could mount a GoPro and a light and it's just a very versatile, it's a series of two different GoPro things that I think I got for free with uh, my Go Hero 3s or something. Uh, it's easy stuff to find, or you can find them on Amazon. These two pieces here, one allows you to mount a regular camcorder, quarter 20 screw to any GoPro mount. This piece right here allows you to take a GoPro and mount it to any tripod quarter 20 mount. I screw these together and just, they just traveled this way. There's an extra GoPro to quarter 20 in case I want to mount it to a tripod. These snazzy little clips, if you've owned a GoPro, you know that these go to some of the GoPro attachments like the GoPro gooseneck clamp thing, which this thing is awesome. Again, check out a lanyard that's attached to it. On top of that, I've drilled an additional hole that I can run a cable lock through. 
So if I want to take this and attach it to something at a distance, I can cable lock it to that and I can safely walk away from it. Um, the top here are these little GoPro clips that clip right in. And of course, this is the frame for the Hero 5 now. For underwater shoots, even though the Hero 5 is an underwater camera, it does go underwater bare just like this. I still bought an actual underwater housing for it, for it to slip into. Um, I just am worried that maybe the GoPro in water is going to get messed up. But on top of that, this is very difficult to float. Like I can attach things to it, the frame to it, and the other stuff to get it to float. But this setup right here allows me to just stick it in here, snap it down, and then this float right here will hold the weight of the camera. So I've got double protection for the camera and I've got it floating. No dork would be complete without a GoPro headband. Stick it on, walk around, shoot what you're seeing. Also for this is I have these little uh, condensation absorbent pads that you can stick inside of here. So it, the change from the heat to the cold water, it absorbs any condensation. And a bag that is really meant just for this, but I shove a bunch of stuff into it. All right, next, I'm shooting on a bunch of cards. I'm, I'm backing up my iPhone to SD cards. I've got the camera that is shooting on SD and I've got the GoPro that is shooting on SD. So I need to carry SD cards. This little Pelican case right here allows me to carry SD cards. It is waterproof, it is durable, it is valuable. Uh, I have etched into the back of it my domain name as well as inside the hinge here, I've added my domain name. Power, in general, you need power. I have two anchors here, which are power blocks. This one has two USB, this one has one USB, and I can use this to charge everything except for the camcorder. I can charge my GoPro, I can charge my phones uh, easily with these guys right here. So I keep these charged and I take them with me, and they're awesome. Speaking of power, you need adapters. All of my gear is automatically 110, 220, so I don't need any converters or inverters. All I need are simple adapters. These are cheap and easy to find on Amazon. I'll link them below, of course. So I take these adapters, and then I have this cool Jabra. Uh, this came with a uh, Bluetooth adapter at one point. It's got two USB up here. It can plug into a car, and then it's got a little uh, fold-out plug in the back. This guy plugs into here and we're good to go. But that would just be one item and that's not enough. In addition to that, there's also, I got this anchor guy, which has two USB and then of course, the iPhone here has USB on it and I got a bunch of things that I need to plug in. So, I bring these guys, th uh, three to one or one to three, depending on what way you wanna look at it. And I can plug this inside of the adapter here, plug the adapter in and now I've got three plugs. But to go even further, I bring in a power bar, and I can take the power bar, take these triples and plug them into here, and this isn't necessarily to add that many plugs, but sometimes you've got the transformers or bulky items, like this guy right here. that take up more than one plug. So that just makes it much easier to attach to all that stuff. Finally, let's talk security. Uh, these are little luggage cable locks. They're not necessarily the most durable thing in the world, uh, but they do function, they do work great. This also allows me to take, as I mentioned, the GoPro clamp. I can use this to clamp, to lock the clamp to something. And I can also take tripod, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, and I can cable lock this to something and then safely walk away at a distance and not have to worry about it. On top of that, I bring some zip ties and of course you need wire cutters to cut the zip ties. And this allows me to zip tie gear to something. Uh, if I wanna get a driving shot and I wanna put a GoPro on the street, I can mount it to a tree, zip tie it to a tree, back the car up, get the shot, come back and grab the GoPro, and I don't have to worry about it walking away. Good fences make good neighbors. I bring two carabiners. One you see is already attached to me here. The other is just a quick backup to have with me. And then I can attach the camera to me. Lens cleaners. These are important to have. I think you can figure out why. I've got this little bean bag guy right here, which is fantastic for 
Putting on things is very easy to carry, put in your pocket. You travel with it empty, and then when you get to your destination, you find some sand, you stick it inside of here, and then you can put it on a rock or put it on things, and you can put the camera on it, and it helps you put the camera so you want it facing up or you want it facing down or whatever. Really nice little thing to carry around with you. This guy right here is a key clip, and it allows you to clip to your belt and then you can carabine onto this clip. So it allows you to carry some additional stuff with you. This guy right here is the Smoothie. It is a stabilizer for cell phones and for GoPros. Uh, I've done other videos on this before and it is totally awesome. This requires no charging, no power. It's completely mechanical. It probably takes me a minute or two to set up but it is super easy to use. It gets really smooth, nice shots, and I never have to worry about the battery on it running out or anything like that. Uh, these are fantastic to have. I've got two of these that I bring, uh, mostly because this is just an antenna here, and I'm kind of worried that it might get tweaked and bent, so I have a second one as a backup. The Polar Pro Grip. This is like a selfie stick, but more. So obviously you can get cool selfies that way. In addition, the grip opens up so you can use it as a tripod. And I take this guy and I attach it to the smoothie to give me a longer handle on the smoothie for when I'm running around. I bring extra wrist straps that I can strap to anything that's here or in case a strap breaks. This I love. Unfortunately, you're going to have a really hard time finding it as I have not been able to find a replacement. Uh, it came from Sony. It screws onto the bottom of the camera and then it easily converts into a tripod. So I generally have this attached to this camera and at my side at all times and then I can set it up on things and use it as a tripod. Um, I wish there was one, a new one I could buy. I've had to silicone and repair this one. I did find this little guy right here, which sort of works in a similar way and also to the bean bag. It's pretty small and easy to carry around. It's got a quarter 20 on it and you can attach a GoPro or a light or anything that's quarter 20. I have actually attached this big camcorder onto it. And then you can adjust it up or down and easily just set it on something to get a shot. My tripod, this is the tripod that I bring. It's a Manfrotto tripod. I've attached a wrist strap to it. And this allows me to have my camera onto here. I generally put this down like this and I walk with this this way. And if someone were to come along and try and steal this from me, immediately my wrist strap is gonna hold it back. So that's gonna keep it safe. In addition to that, I can use this wrist strap to cable lock to anything. And on top of that, I've got this little tool here which allows me to loosen and tighten screws like the one that's on the bottom of this one. Bank bags, that's where I got these. These are uh, money bags for taking your money to the bank for businesses typically. Uh, this one I have painted all nasty. This is a microphone bag. Uh, they're much like shaver bags. You can go into a hardware store and you can get tool bags that look like this. Although bank bags were used to be free and I had a bunch of them lying around and they've got a decent amount of pad. But this is how I pack all of this gear as I put it into these various bags so I can take it with me. Now. In the last video, I forgot to mention this awesome little guy here, which holds your passport that's essential to any travel. And this has these little straps here, which allow you to strap it to a belt. You can slide your passports inside and then strap it to your belt on the outside and it makes it really easy and safe to carry your passports. And finally, I mentioned this in the last uh, packing vlog, a couple of blankets, uh, a pillow, an eye patch, and headphones for your iPhone. I also bring a splitter uh, because Deanna and I will sometimes watch the same movie. So I plug the uh, headphone splitter into one and then we can both listen to it. All of this gets packed into the leftover room in my backpack and into my day pack. And in what might be a very boring montage, I will pack it all up from above and you can see that happen. So 
Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notifications button, go to facebook.com slash Deanna and Vince and make sure to follow us there. And for a complete list of all of this gear, I'm gonna list it below. If I missed anything, if you got, oh, I did miss something. I missed this little guy right here. <laughs> um, this has more quarter 20s. This has three on a straight band and I can mount the camera like this and then mount a light next to it or I can put the GoPro in the center of it and I can put two lights on each, either side of it. Uh, these you can find on Amazon too. They're pretty simple and another little quarter 20 and a quarter 20. So there you go. I missed something. If I missed anything else then comment below and I will include it in the next video for the next trip. Thanks. You probably didn't think I could fit it all. <laughs>